Kiora, may God, Father, Son, and Spirit be honored amongst us today. May the Spirit teach you, the grace of Jesus encourage you, and the love of God the Father embrace you. I'm Ian Guy, minister here at the Wakatabu Presbyterian Church, Queenstown, New Zealand. And what follows, there is a reading of God's Word from Acts chapter 4, a sermon, and then if you are following this as part of a playlist, there will be some songs of worship for you, for you to raise your own voice in honour of your God. Shall we pray? Living Lord, we gather today across time and space to worship you. United by the words we read, united by our love for you, we celebrate your awesome majesty, your holiness and your amazing love. We acknowledge you as Lord of our lives. We sing your praise and we bless your name. Living Lord, we give thanks for all that you have done in our lives and pray that we will continue to be open to your work in us. In Jesus' name, amen. A reading now from the book of Acts, chapter 4, reading from verse 1 to verse 31. Acts chapter 4 The priests and the captain of the temple guard and the Sadducees came up to Peter and John while they were speaking to the people. They were greatly disturbed because the apostles were teaching the people, proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection of the dead. They seized Peter and John, and because it was evening, they put them in jail until the next day. But many who heard the message believed. So the number of men who believed grew to about 5,000. The next day, the rulers, the elders, and the teachers of the law met in Jerusalem. Annas, the high priest, was there, and so were Caiaphas, John, Alexander, and others of the high priest's family. They had Peter and John brought before them and began to question them. By what power or what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers and elders of the people, if we are being called to account today for an act of kindness shown to a man who was lame and are being asked how he was healed, then know this. You and all the people of Israel, it is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. Jesus is the stone you builders rejected, which has become the cornerstone. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. When they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men, they were astonished, and they took note that these men had been with Jesus. But since they could see the man who had been healed standing there with them, there was nothing they could say. So they ordered them to withdraw from the Sanhedrin and then conferred together. What are we going to do with these men? they asked. Everyone living in Jerusalem knows they have performed a notable sign and we cannot deny it. But to stop this thing from spreading any further among the people, we must warn them to speak no longer to anyone in this name. Then they called them in again and commanded them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John replied, Which is right in God's eyes, to listen to you or to him? You be the judges. As for us, we cannot help speaking about what we have seen and heard. After further threats, they let them go. They could not decide how to punish them, because all the people were praising God for what had happened. For the man who was miraculously healed was over forty years old. On their release, Peter and John went back to their own people and reported all that the chief priests and the elders had said to them. When they heard this, they raised their voices together in prayer to God. Sovereign Lord, they said. You have made the heavens and the earth and the sea and everything in them. You spoke by the Holy Spirit 
through the mouth of your servant, our father David. Why do the nations rage and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth rise up and the rulers band together against the Lord and against his anointed one. Indeed, Herod and Pontius Pilate met together with the Gentiles and the people of Israel in this city to conspire against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed. They did what your power and will had decided beforehand should happen. Now, Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. Stretch out your hand to heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. After they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. There is a truth expressed in this passage that we would like to avoid. Confrontation, opposition, persecution. This should be no surprise. Jesus warned that there would be opposition. At times, enormous struggle and persecution. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 10 to 12, for example, we hear Jesus saying, You're blessed when your commitment to God provokes persecution. The persecution drives you even deeper into God's kingdom. Not only that, count yourselves blessed every time people put you down or throw you out or speak lies about you to discredit you. What it means is that the truth is too close for comfort and they are uncomfortable. You can be glad when that happens. Give a cheer even. For though they don't like it, I do. And all heaven applauds. And know that you are in good company. My prophets and witnesses have always gotten into this kind of trouble. There was a reading from the message version. And also from the message. Because very soon it was time to prepare the disciples for the task waiting them. So we read in Matthew chapter 10, verse 16 to 23. Jesus says, Stay alert. This is hazardous work I'm assigning you. You're going to be like sheep running through a wolf pack. So don't call attention to yourselves. Be as cunning as a snake, inoffensive as a dove. Don't be naive. Some people will impugn your motives. Others will smear your reputation just because you believe in me. Don't be upset when they haul you before the civil authorities. Without knowing it, they've done you and me a favour. Given you a platform for preaching the kingdom news. And don't worry about what you'll say or how you'll say it. The right words will be there. The spirit of your father will supply the words. When people realise it is the living God you are presenting and not some idol that makes them feel good, they are going to turn on you, even people in your own family. There is a great irony here. But proclaiming so much love, experiencing so much hate. But don't quit. Don't cave in. It is all well worth it in the end. It is not success you are after in such times, but survival. Be survivors. Before you run out of options, the Son of Man will have arrived. In John 15, Jesus goes on, on to teach that just as they have persecuted him, Jesus, then they who follow will also be persecuted. And in many places, Jesus continued to, continued to tell his disciples to expect violence, arrest, persecution. These are not matters that we identify with easily in this land of relative freedom and, com and comfort. Yet there is no doubt that over the centuries, the blood of the faithful has flowed and still today flows. In nations like our own, persecution takes a different form. The struggle of living the Christian life is becoming plainer as New Zealand continues a path away from God and towards the powers and principalities of this world. Persecution and struggles of various kinds, however, have been with the church since the beginning. And here in Acts 4, we see persecution rising 
in response to the growth of the church. <clears throat> the, the disciples expected this. It is exactly what Jesus had warned them, ab them about. And today, as we read, we learn from them as they respond in faith. It all began with an arrest, verse 3. Because the captain of the guard was not pleased by the preaching about the resurrection of Jesus that Peter had been doing in response to the healing of the, lame, of the lame man by the gate beautiful. And you can read about that in chapter 3. As Peter preached, many listened, including many others who were disturbed by these words. The disturbed included the priests on duty at the temple, the captain, captain of the temple guard who we have mentioned already, and the Sadducees, the religious liberals of their day. They are greatly disturbed by what was happening for two reasons. First, that Peter and John were teaching the people, though they were unknown to them without credentials. And second, and more disturbing to them, is Peter and John are saying that Jesus lives, that he died but is resurrected. They had executed Jesus as a blasphemer, but if he is resurrected, then they, especially the Sadducees who deny any resurrection, are exposed as the false teachers. They want to shut them up. But there are rules about what they can do, so Peter and John are put in jail overnight, where they have to wait before their case is heard by the Sanhedrin in the morning. There's also an interesting consequence to this that Luke, the author, notes in verse 4. But many who heard the message believed. So the number of men who believed grew to about 5,000. There is opposition to... There is opposition, but the church continues to multiply. 3,000 were added to the number on the day of Pentecost, and now 5,000 men are counted. The history of the church often repeats this. When opposed, the church grows. When approved, the church becomes lax. Passion slips. Evangelism disappears. Decline follows. So the church responded by growing. But how did Peter and John respond? Now, for anyone who knows Peter, the response is surprising. Neither resisted the arrest. Unlike the same Peter who tried to stop the arrest of Jesus by slashing off the air of the high priest's servant with a sword, this is a new Peter, a spirit-filled Peter, who now knows restraint. And then Luke quickly moves the story, the action to the trial day. The rulers, the elders, and the teachers of the law are gathered. These three groups are the Sanhedrin, the high court of Israel, 70, 71 men in total. And before them stands just two men, Peter and John, and according to verse 10, a sole witness, the lame man who was healed. The questions begin appropriately, verse 7. By what power or what name did you, did you do this? It seems at this point that the focus was on the healing and the question was valid. They, as guardians of the faith, had a responsibility to ensure that any teaching and working of miracles was done in God's name and not in the name of any other God. Deuteronomy chapter 13, verse 1 to 5. And so Peter responds, and Luke makes it very clear that he responds in the power of the Holy Spirit. His answer is courteous, clear, controversial. He addresses the Sanhedrin with respect and clearly states that the healing took place was in the name or by the authority of Jesus Christ. And then comes the real controversy. Whom you crucified, he says, whom God raised from the dead. Peter is preaching in the power of the Spirit. Christ alone is a means of salvation. Verse 12. Peter is also quick to point out their witness standing in their presence. All they have done was for the good of this man. And surely there is nothing illegal in the act of helping someone be healed. To drive home his case, Peter turns to the Psalms and quotes Psalm 118, verse 22. The stone... The builders rejected has become the cornerstone. 
Back in Matthew chapter 21, when Jesus began teaching in the temple courts, members of the same group had asked him, by whose authority are you teaching? Note the same question they asked Peter and John. And part of the answer that Jesus gave also employed Psalm 118, 22. And then he had gone on to say that the kingdom of God would be taken away from them and given to a people that would produce the fruit of it. And that, and that this stone which they had rejected would crush them. Matthew 21, verse 42 to 44. And now here, Peter reminds them of what Jesus had said. The challenge was laid down. And he concluded by returning to Jesus Christ, that there is salvation only in him. A statement simple and clear and eternal. Today, people will attempt to work out their own salvation. And society rejects absolute truth. And many believe that there are many paths to God. But to seek salvation apart from Jesus is a dead-end path. That is why the church preaches Christ alone. For no one wants to see you heading down a dead end. Christ alone. Peter has been firm and challenging. He has, he has, without hesitation or shame, proclaimed Jesus. The challenge this gives you and I is, are we as willing and able to proclaim Jesus? Peter himself wrote in his first letter, in chapter 3, verse 15, In your hearts revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to anyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have, but do this with gentleness and respect. Always be prepared to proclaim Christ. Take a moment to let that sink in. Ask yourself, do I revere Christ? Am I always ready to give an answer to anyone? who asks me for the reason, for the hope, that I say I live by. Are you prepared to proclaim Christ? Now on this day, in this trial, the Sanhedrin, they have to make a response to all of this. They have noted the confidence of Peter and John and they recognize that they have been with Jesus and they struggled to know how to respond. The miracle they could not debate. It was plainly before them, but the teaching that went with it was challenging to them personally and they wanted to shut it down. But they had really lost all confidence by this time. Meekly they rule in verse 18 that Peter and John could go but that they must not speak of Jesus again. To which Peter responded as directly as he had before. We cannot stop speaking of what we have seen and heard. Therefore, you will need to decide if we should obey you or God. Verse 19 to 20. Here is a model for us. While in the normal run of things, God says we must obey the authority of the land, there is a but. And what follows about is this. When the authorities ask you to do something, or stop doing something that God requires, then it is God that we must obey. God is our final authority. And we must never disobey him. Finally, with the Sanhedrin confused and weakened in the face of all the people praising God for what had happened. Peter and John are released, and they return to the embrace of the other believers where they are told everything that had happened. And their response is prayer. Praying together, magnifying God as creator, and fulfiller of prophecy, they seek God's boldness as they continue to speak the word of God. Yes, they're not going to obey the ruling of the Sanhedrin. 
they go they are going to obey the call of God to speak his word to be witnesses to Jesus Christ when under threat rather than retreating they became bold, bolder and braver and they seek from God greater boldness still freedom and confidence to speak for God and God answers prayer in this case by shaking the place up and pouring out the spirit again as they began to do what had been prayed they began to speak the word of God boldly sometimes we are under pressure to shut up to not speak of God at times by authorities by general society even sadly at times by embarrassed or non-believing family members how should we respond first by prayer seeking God's boldness second by speaking maybe we'll modify when we speak even where we speak but we will continue continue to live out our faith by not denying the call upon our lives we will be witnesses to Jesus Christ we will proclaim him with our lifestyle our attitudes our actions and in our speech and as we do God guides and empowers us by his spirit remember disciples of Jesus will face opposition but we do not face opposition unprepared or alone God is with us and in Jesus Christ the victory is his shall we pray Lord our God we thank you for your word and we would ask that you would grant us boldness that we may live the life of Christ freely without fear that we may always be ready to proclaim Jesus that we'll do it with words that are truthful that are clear that are faithful but we do it with love and grace and courtesy grant us by your spirit the power to speak and the grace to be gentle to be loving as we continue as witnesses of you our Lord and our Savior Amen you are now encouraged to continue with the playlist and uh, sing along with some songs if you are following this on YouTube but whatever you do today whatever you are involved with today wherever you go today may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always Amen <music>